which has 18,000, ISO uh, 14,000, and ISO 9,000, because the standards are more or less the same, except here and there where you just need to do specific adjustment. And then at the bottom there, you can see that we just uh, mentioned uh, a couple of our clients, which include the ones at Zaro, Universal Codes, African uh, Exploration, the Mass Codes, Papa Seven, and so forth. Thank you. Okay, this video yeah, is a new area of challenge truck that was involved in an accident this led us to rethink the way in which we managed our fleet. With the introduction of RTMS, Road Transport Management System, we realized the value addition to our complete solutions in both haulage fleet and the materials handling operations within the mining houses. Through RTMS, we managed to ensure optimum use of our machinery on the haulage side and on the loading end, as we have regulated overloading and in the underloading of materials. The continuous monitoring of our fleet has maintained a record previously unknown to new things on the road. Since the implementation of RTMS, the transport management system, only one severe vehicle incident has been encountered. The RTMS is a safety game changer that has changed the game for new era commerce. New era commerce, moving the nations forward one trip at a time. What we were trying to uh, communicate here was the point that we had one truck, uh, then two months back, a different truck, a brand new truck, it was less than six months, got involved in a safety accident. So, what happened there, after all the investigations that we conducted, including the insurance companies, we discovered that um, that incident itself, it was caused by the other truck that was actually coming around where it was coming from. We looked at the speed profile of the truck, the driver himself, his fatigue, everything was above board. So with RTMS, as much as we might be certified ourselves, but the other guys are not certified on the road, it becomes a challenge because it was a truck on truck accident. The guy was trying to be a robot, the other guy. One of our guy, he just left looking for the client, just five minutes away from the client. So he was having a right of way. The other guy came through, he wanted to feed a robot, he got he bumped the top of him. It was the truck was finished. Well don't insurance set it, but yeah, it's one of the things that I'm glad that RTMS is pushing it's self regulation. However, all of us will need to take responsibility. Because now the, the, the norm in the industry is that as long as I've got a truck moving the material from A to B, put an invoice to the client, have money in every month, I don't care. So those are the challenges that we experience now uh, with the industry. As much as you can invest a lot of money into systems, we've got value charts, we try to make sure that maintenance is taken seriously. As much as we've got flaws and challenges within our own uh, procedures and systems that we are not implementing fully, but it cannot be one-sided because you can do it 100%, but if the other parties are not playing their role, then you end up having a problem like that. Oh, this picture here, we just wanted to say thanks to KP. Uh, Having that chairman, I think, that a bit has gained confidence as well. We are a part of uh, some industry structures now where we get invited to participate and learn from the best. This was part of the Logistics uh, Achievers Award last week uh, in Monte Cassino. So we, we learned very much there. The big guys, they're doing wonderful things. So as a small company, we felt you know, this was worth it for us. Because every day, you don't have to have a way to have 400 trucks for you to start doing good things. We've got a, you can have a fleet of 10, 20, 50 trucks, and you can do wonders. So we, we're very thankful to Standard Bank for his support and the trust that he's given us. Thank you. Yeah, so this one was just a gesture to Katie to say thank you, Standard Bank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one I'm going to give you to Zix here. Uh, okay, so this. So there's an, um, basically a population of other uh, uh, 
haulers or transporters, and also green, which is in grey, and also new era commerce, which is in blue. So our performance, for example, on speeding, uh, the, the, the average risk for the RMS population is shown there in the middle, if you can see, and uh, in green, we, we have been performing better, so there's been a lower risk, I mean, uh, close to zero, so it means the risk or on speeding is low for us. So we we try to manage compliance, especially uh, on roads where, uh, on urban roads, because uh, our trucks, we limit our drivers to drive at 80 on national roads. So now we we need to be able to monitor the performance of our drivers on, on urban roads where the, the speed limit is 60. That, that's, that's where there's been a challenge uh, for us, because we need to be able to um, identify the roads uh, where, where the speed limit is. So basically we've, risk, we've been to, uh, limited our drivers uh, to drive at, at 60 when they are off uh, national roads until we are able to identify the roads where the speed limit is above 60 and then and then we can designate as, as such. So we're able to monitor remotely. We have um, a control room where it is a 24 hour shift uh, operation. It is able to monitor the, 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 the trucks uh, nationally and also respond uh, in real time if there's any deviation from, from speed limit. And also, um, with regard to uh, fatigue, managing fatigue, for example, we have uh, shifts where drivers work, for example, uh, um, and, and take breaks or take uh, leave, for example, four days on and, and four days off, and others seven days off, um, yeah. Okay, um, here, it's, uh, okay, uh, here, it's uh, one of our assistants that we use, uh, it's called Data Team. Um, during our improvement, we realized that um, having to monitor such a number of employees uh, is not easy. You need systems in place. So we invested a lot in systems like Data Team. Like this one here, it shows you that this driver's, driver's uh, license can expire, so we get alerts every day and we start preparing it on time. And then the next one just shows you the medical, the PDP, and then we also have the medicals and so forth. So here, with the help of RTMS, um, we've gone down route to say, now we need our drivers to be competent. I believe a driver is a driver, but at the end of the day, we need the product knowledge. You can drive a Volvo, you can drive a land big Tifa. So with our trucks, Volvo comes and takes the drivers, same as the MAA ones. So this is just a certificate, and then, we, we take our maintenance serious. This is our vehicle road weight test weightiness. Um, with this sheet, this is the one the mechanic uses when the vehicle comes to the workshop. So they check it according to that. They check the tires, they check the vehicle itself, they take the sign and the supervisor's signs as well. Okay, this is our control room, how it looks. Well, there's still people, but <laughs> the future are not there. Um, okay. So this is the live monitoring that we use. As you can see, there's different colors. Gray means that the vehicle has stopped. Gray, they're moving. Right, well, there's no signal there. And there's a lot that we do from this live monitoring. If I can start mentioning, I'll take the whole thing. Okay, this is the camera that we use inside our cab. We're not allowed to call our drivers on cell phones, but we use the camera to call them in and also to check what driver, how the driver behavior is at the cab. Okay, so this is how it looks inside and out. This is just a snapshot of the video. Or we can see what the driver is happening. We can see the weakness of the tire. We can see the, the outside activities. Okay. Um, yeah, because also we need to monitor uh, overloading and, and, and underloading, especially with regards to overloading. When we underload, basically it's our loss, uh, because um, Instead of 34 tons, we transport 33 ton or 32 ton. Uh, we lost an opportunity there to transport 32 ton. But on overloading, basically, there's a, a, a limit on the on the mass or the cross mass that the vehicle can is, is allowed to transport on the road of 56 ton um, across tonnage for, for the 34 ton side tipper. So, for example, as you can see, uh, in March 2018, there was an overload of. Um, 12% or I mean of 12 loads which was 4.6% um, and then in March 2019 if you compare uh, there was an overloading of, of 9 loads uh, out of the 311 loads 
uh, which was 2.89%. So there are, there are an improvement, and we are uh, fortunately where we load the, the, um, for the site shippers, um, there are weight bridges, so we're able to monitor the, the loading, and, and if the truck is overloaded, uh, in some instances, able to go back and, and, and reduce the loading. So here, anything above the 34 times, so we are able to check if the truck is overloaded. So there's been a reduction in number of overloads, and also a reduction, uh, although there was an increase in the number of, of, of underloads uh, to 21 uh, from 7. Uh, as mentioned earlier, that uh, as part of the journey uh, on RTMS, we were also able to get ourselves certified on the standard that I've mentioned uh, on SHEP, uh, which is uh, which has 18,000, ISO 14,000, which is parameter, and the quality standard. So that um, that big part of RTMS was helpful to us because the information, as I said, is more or less the same. Just only here and there, we just need to do some additions. Yeah, so this is one of the achievements that we, we can actually mention as part of the achievements journey. Okay, uh, I think Zakir uh, did make mention of this, that uh, we had a surveillance audit uh, last month, which is September, for us to get recertified on achievements. So this is what we have classified or identified as like, the major findings that we need to deal with. Because in the main, uh, we typically focus on the 80 kilometer travel speed, which is mainly on the freeways. However, on the urban roads, uh, that's where there was lack of monitoring. We find that the speed kilometer is 60 kilometers on the guys is 65, and then we only pick that one up when we start receiving the, the, the traffic files on the standard bank system. So that's where we realized that this is a, a, a huge area of concern because we never paid attention. Because previously we used to be heavily on the site tippers, now we've got the refrigerator trucks. They load, they go to a mall inside an urban area. So we have realized that we need to really work on that one, of which I think now we're trying to put systems in place to control that. So yeah, and also another area, as I said, we do a lot of long distances. So we have been exceeding like sometimes the, the, the scheduled uh, maintenance um, uh, time frames. So you find that the trucks, they go over by 2,000 because it's somewhere in uh, Western Cape and the truck is loaded, uh, you can't take it to, uh, maybe to the old camp to fix it there because you've got an express load. The client says it's going loaded and you can't stop. You've got something like ice cream or chocolate, it must be somewhere in Devon and that will pile up around 2,000 kilometers. So, but we try to find a way that can assist us to manage that so that we don't uh, do the uh, overrun the maintenance schedule. And then lastly, I think Oliver was mentioning it, his close, closing there that if you are certified, you need to submit your quarterly report. I think we've just picked up that we, we're looking there, so we need to be timers in terms of our, our submission. Because at times we make a mistake and think, no, I've done it, uh, and then you relax. So we just need to also improve there. It's one weakness that we've identified. Because uh, our as when we look at it, it it's actually a journey you don't do and say I've arrived at the destination. It's just a, a continuous improvement process that you need to understand from the point of view. So yeah, that's one area that we we are we can do to so improve going forward. Okay, this is the speeding I'll give you too much in my ear. Okay, as mentioned previously, well our speeding was <coughs> on time. Um, like Tokazan said, we only concentrated on the highways, not on the national roads. But we picked up that even on the highways, the guys speed, and we never, we do monitor, but we never actually looked into it what the speed was. So we picked up on the previous report that okay, the guys will speed up to a speed of 100, which is ridiculously high. So now with the new improvements in place, the guys have reduced as well. We've tested using the same vehicle again, and then the speed limit has dropped now. So we, this is a continuous improvement and we're going to keep on doing time and time again. So with the service overruns, as it was mentioned before, these were the service overruns. Wherever you see red, that service overrun that we had previously. But um, with the new plans in place, we're working forward to eliminate this and start on a clean sheet. Okay, and there's one more thing to Ah, okay. As part of the RTMS surveillance audit, uh, we identified areas of weakness. 
And then uh, after, soon after that, we had to come up with collective action and pre preventive action. So we have gone uh, as far as say, uh, we need to take our chairman seriously. And we thought you get ourselves because that function was shared across. So now we have decided that we, from next year, we want to have a full time art chairman's manager. Because our, our fleet is growing, we just aging, I think, 12 trucks from next month. And we, we can't take that lightly. Uh, 12 trucks on society pass, you put two drivers per truck. We've got close to 20 additional employees. So as a result, we decided to get a um, very experienced driver trainer. He's on, on board. Uh, he has started already. We just want to take this uh, driver training very, very, very seriously. Because in transport, we have sort of actually paid attention that the cuts or the core of the business is a driver, is a truck driver. So now the approach is that we need to continue to train the drivers. We will rely on a six month defensive training or a yearly defensive training that is offered by the insurance. Yes, it was good, but we realized that the intensity of the course was not what we want. It's just a one day course, quick, quick certificate issued. So, with this approach, the guy internal is full time. Obviously, when the external guy comes in, is to validate what the internal guy is doing, if you are doing it correctly. So, the guy is full time now, you will be doing the drivers every this is a schedule, so it's going to be a routine, so that we can start reducing the risk by overspeeding, making sure that the trucks are driven properly, because it, it, it's not worth it to go buy a brand new truck for 2.8 million rand. The next day, it's finished on the road. It's not worth it at all. So we try to correct that. So we hope that by this time next year, there should be massive improvement. We should be telling a different story to what we're telling now. And also, with regards to services, um, so we can schedule now uh, the service in suburbs. For example, the service is due, let's say, at 160,000 kilometers. We can send a truck at 2,000 kilometers before the 158,000 kilometers. So now that's how we try to limit or prevent um, like uh, going over to on the, on the schedule for maintenance service with the OEM. And also, we are making an improvement in submitting the quarterly RTM uh, reports. Again, now this is just to show you, uh, it's just a simple sample, just to show that um, we have a, a driver trainer. So the driver trainer, what he does is, <coughs> he doesn't just do in-class training, he also goes on route and does their own assessment with the driver as well, to, to that thing, so that the drivers can continue continuously go time and time again. Okay, that's the end of the presentation.